Well, by God, son of a bitch, what the hell's going on out there? Sam Salem straight out of Miami. Just got back from a big vacation. Been gone for a while, but now I'm back. And just tying videos and making it so you, the viewer, can see what the fuck is really going on. My friend Peyton just got back from up on the East Coast there out in Michigan. Went to a little small town called Bronson. Sounds like, sounds like an actor's name to me. But he was out there having a hell of a time meeting friends, shaking hands, and being my friend Pete like my friend Pete does. He ran across the fella that has a painting body shop right there in his front yard of his house. It's a hell of a situation. And it's, it's a situation that says, you know what? This guy can do it, so can you. Let's go see that video. I, I, I just got done editing it. We're going to watch this video, and we're going to tell ourselves, hell yes. If this guy can do it, I can do it. I can get off my ass, and I can be somebody too. This guy that we're going to watch right now is a hell of a guy, a hell of a situation. It's a situation that says, I got off my ass. I did something about it, and here I am doing it and doing it right. This guy's name's Greg Fowler out there in Bronson, Michigan, might not Mississippi, out in Michigan town. Bronson, that is. What the hell's that actor's name? That son of a bitch by the name of Bronson. Uh, yeah, that guy, you know who I'm talking about. That's all you got to remember. Lives out there and works out there right there at his house. Doing a beautiful job, making it right, and taking the advice that says, I can do it by myself. Let's watch that video, and let's see what the hell's going on in Bronson, Michigan, with a guy named Greg Fowler. I just got back from Miami. Had a beautiful time with my beautiful hat, smoking my cigar and tell myself, why the hell am I here? Why don't I stay out there in Miami? Sammy Salami straight out of Miami, that's me. But I'm here, I'm the edit guy. I'm the guy that makes the videos so you can watch the videos. Staying up late hours of the night, burning the candle light, and making everything right for you. Over here at SWRNC's, that Southwest rides and customs, home of my friend Pete, and all the crazy clown acts that go on right here. It's not about my hat. It's never about me. It's never about fuck off me. He talks bitches and I gotta go. Greg Fowler, if you need any kind of paint and body work, custom paint and body work, you got a car you need restored, give this guy a call. Because he's out there in your part of the country and he's doing it right. I got to go. See you later. See you down the road. All right. Seven Salami straight out of Miami. Kicking the asses and taking names and getting her done right. You know, me and Hood Eye are out here cruising around, checking it out. We're in good old USA America, and we're in Michigan waiting for the big car show in Kalamazoo. So we came across this guy just, uh, you know, traveling the back roads and having a good time. And we came across a guy named Fowler. His name's Greg Fowler, and it says Greg Fowler Custom Paint. And he's got a car over here. Now, this guy works out of his garage at home. He's a good old USA American guy, has his shop right here at home, and... Uh, does it all right here. I mean, it's it's an awesome fucking place, and the reason we're going to film him is because he's got a car up there, 
that he completely restored. Let's go talk to him, let's get the angle of it, and let's see what he has to say. What's going on, buddy? Hey, nothing. What's your name, dude? My name is Greg Fowler. Okay, Greg Fowler, you're out here in what town, bud? Uh, it's Bronson, Michigan. Bronson, Michigan, which is basically right around the surrounding area of Kalamazoo? Yes. How far are you from Kalamazoo? Uh, how far are we? About 50 miles. I'm sorry, oh, oh, is this your buddy? Yeah. What's your name, bro? Shake your hand, make a friend. What's going on? John Kaiser. Please John Kaiser, you look like a biker guy, dude. You riding motorcycles today? A little John? bit, a little bit. Well, good, dude. I noticed that Jack's got a motorcycle. Jack's like a Harley rider guy. What kind of bike you riding? A B ride. A B ride? Yes, sir. A Harley? Yeah. There you go, dude. Speed Cowboy Demon. Yeah. Speed Demon. <laughs> you got some competition here, guys. Here you go, bud. There you go, bud. All right. What's the angle of your situation here, dude? Now, you were telling me you had a big shop somewhere. Uh, Elkhart, Indiana. Elkhart, Indiana. Hang on, dude. You guys can't talk, bud. I'm over here trying to... Okay, is there a problem? Who not? What the fuck's going on here? Oh, no, I'm just okay. listening. I asked you guys before I started filming, don't talk. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'm not an asshole, dude. I'm not an asshole. I'm a nice guy, Greg. Shake your hand, make a friend, but All right, so you had a big shop at one time in your life. And what's the situation, dude? Uh, I shut it down in 2010. Kind Why? Of, well, economy went south and uh -huh. uh, just got tired of the hassle. So okay. built me a shop here, just downsized. And now, where was this other shop out versus this place? How far away? Uh, it was 60 miles. 60 miles away. Right. Now, did you have a good name going out there? Uh, yes. Yeah. And was, it, was it Fowler Custom Paint? Or? Yeah, it was Fowler Custom Paint. Now, you used to do everything there, I guess. Collision work, well, paint, yeah, mine, but, custom paint. Right. And it was kind of the... It's the Industries hub right there, so I did a lot of uh, vans. A so lot you had of, contracts with these big corporations. Well, yeah, especially the ambulance industry. I painted probably 3,000 ambulances. So what, what does that explain? That what that is? Uh, basically, uh, it was box style ambulances that you see running around. They're aluminum bodies. This company would two okay, companies. Okay, like UPS trucks, for instance. Yeah, they're about that size. Yeah, uh -huh. and we uh -huh. would we would shoot them in Emron and stripe them and. Emron. Yeah. That's a dangerous paint. Yeah, yeah. yeah I hear that. Now that paint there actually is the only paint that will actually penetrate through the pores of your skin to get into your system. Uh, yeah, I think, well, we like clear makeup systems and we had protection. So you are protected pretty well. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. That's so the, basically when you say the, comp the, uh, the uh, business went downhill, it's because you lost contracts and stuff with these big corporations and lost all your business. Yeah, it was when the economy went south, yeah, I tried hanging out at the place as long as I could and Elkhart took a real bad hit. So, uh, what do you we, think about the corporation? Uh, they want you when they, they love you when they need you and stick it in your fucking ass when they don't need you. So. Yeah, when one company I worked for, when they were small, it was great. And then oh. once they got bought out by a bigger company, then the appreciation went away. I mean, I worked holidays. Exactly, exactly. I mean, I worked holidays, weekends, 70 hours a week. Did Busting your ass for the corporation yeah. to make that quick buck. And then once they don't need you, fuck you, we don't need you, guy. Yeah, once it got too big, then you lose track of those people. In it. That's right, dude. Yeah. Did you get depressed when you lost that business from them guys, making them weekly, getting a check in the mail every week from these dudes? Because I know they're probably paying, what, a 30-day? Yeah, novel. they push 30, 60 days and 90 days. And but once the minute starts rolling in, I mean, you're used to that check coming in all the time. You get right. in the bank. Oh, they'll go get the check, sweetheart. We need to put it in the bank, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, I know all about that. Yeah. Dude. I used to do rental cars. It sucks. Yeah. The situation we had though, you closed that big business down. You said, "Screw this. I'm going. I'm going way out in the country. I'm going to do this shit at home." And, and, and you know, screw the big guy. We're just going to work for the small guy, the guy that really counts in the world. And, and now you're out here. You don't even. You don't even advertise. Is that right? Uh, no, it's all word of mouth. Word of mouth guy. You even told me you're going to have this customer appreciation uh, uh, car show out here in a couple weeks, and you're expecting how many cars, bud? I'm not sure this year because uh, last last year was last minute thing and uh -huh. we had we had this place full so it was full. Uh, yeah. Hold on, man. Yeah, they, they, Let's they show got... everybody what you got here, dude. Because you're talking all this here, yeah. and then uh, hold on, all this here it was it was full. So it was like it was like uh, Greg Fowler Custom Car Show. Now you're telling me you did work for all these people that that are coming out here. Or? Yeah, they're and a lot of these guys are in car clubs, so their friends came and. Uh, and anybody that person wow, that I knew, uh, so it worked out pretty. So good. you're a pretty popular guy in this part of the country. Well, I'm getting known a little bit, you know. I uh, now I'm set up on Facebook, so I've got a little more exposure. So now I noticed something else. You're kind of a one-man operation, no helpers, no nothing, dude. Right. I just. And we're gonna take a look yeah. at your shop in a minute, if you don't mind. Yeah. Bro. 
But right now, what we got, we got a car we want to look at. You were showing us this car, and you did this in 850 hours, which basically comes out to be six months. Yeah. And before we look at it, let's go ahead and talk about it. You said that it was completely rotted out, rusted. Basically, it was, it was a barn find that was uh, buried in the ground, and you took this thing from a rotted pile of shit and made uh, a brand new car out of it. Yeah, it was uh, a guy had held onto it for a long time, and it was in his barn. It was kind of a damp barn, so it pretty much uh, rotted away, but... Uh, he wanted to restore it, he wanted to hang on to it, so we stripped her down and brought her back. Now when you say strip it down, did you gut it out, put brand new motors in, transmissions, uh, yeah, the, uh, the mechanical, the, uh, drivetrains, paint, right. body, the whole nine yards? Yes, uh, the motor was uh, rebuilt by a guy in Quincy, and, but uh, yeah, everything was... No, I'm talking about you. Did you do all the work? I, everything but rebuild the motor, yes. Okay, just, uh, so you took the motor and tranny out, put all that back in, you did basically everything? Well, my brother-in-law is actually a mechanic. Okay. And it actually is his car, so he was oh, able. Oh, yes. Yeah, so he was able to pull the motor, right. and get that all taken care of. So it was basically a, a, a customer appreciation on that end, where he actually helped you out on that angle, and and, and you guys got it done together. Uh, on the mechanical end, yes. You all did. right. Am I, well, am I going too fast for you, Greg? No, <laughs> no I'm we good, are, man. We are up on the East Coast, but I heard you Yankee guys, you guys talk fast. Uh, yeah, I don't okay, not so, so much you know, anymore. Okay, so me talking fast to you, asking you questions, shouldn't be a bother. I mean, we're not yeah. down in Texas. We're not pondering over the situation. Right. We're not taking a long gander, <laughs> and we're not calling anybody a greenhorn here, dude. Right. <laughs> okay, let's look at this Mustang. Let's check it out. You say it's a 72 Mach 1. Yep. Show us around, see what we got, dude. Everything on this car has been replaced with the roof and the deck lid. It was all uh -huh. rotten. So, so. The, so you're telling me that this basically was a, a Frankenstein Mustang. This was a Rustang from hell. Yeah, you might say that. Now, do you know the history on Mustangs? Uh, as in? Well, you know, the factory Ford didn't really give a shit about actually protecting the metal on these and didn't really give a shit about people restoring these cars. So when they ran these cars through the, the assembly lines, uh, rust preventing them, rust preventing them was the least thing on their mind. They just ran them through, they popped them together, ran them out, and that's why most people call them rust tanks, is because they basically are a rusted pile of shit straight out of the factory. Right. Did you know that? Uh, I see that a lot in the 70s. Even, the, even some of the Chevys are that way. I can see yeah. nothing was ever meant to last. No, you know? Nothing was meant to restore. Right. The corporation's there again, screwing you in the ass, Greg. Once again, they did it, dude. Once again. Basically, like I said, stripped it to metal, replaced all the panels, replaced all the floors inside. Now, when you say panels, that's full quarter panel action. Right. All the way up into the sail panel. The only problem with the mock in this year, you could only get the quarters up to here. So I had to, actually had to weld these quarters in. So you literally went right up to here. Now, I know when you get a lot of these quarter panels, it has usually a one-inch lip on them. Right. And I call those patch panels. Right. Because you're not really supposed to use those. That's just a section you can buy. And then if you need this lower half here, you might need that piece there. But you literally took that thing and replaced that whole quarter panel. Now, did you go all the way up into this edge here, or did you come down? Yeah, Where I had to go across. It? This is the biggest quarter that's available for this. Uh huh. So I searched all over. They did not make one with a sail, so I had to, I had to weld the thing full length. Into wow. It. Now, what's your opinion on these aftermarket, uh, we might say Taiwan, made in Taiwan bullshit parts? Yeah, I've never had, very rarely do I have something I can take out of the box and put on yeah. the car without modifying it. Auto modifications, oh, especially yeah. on the Mustangs, because yeah. there's so many parts out there made. Now, did you know that these parts, these aftermarket parts, there's only two factories that make these. Did you know that? Uh, out in Taiwan. Yeah, I, I kind of got that. If point. you get a Dynacorn, uh, Dynacorn part, it's made in the factory that Mid America is at. It's the same thing, all just right. different box. And another thing about these parts, I don't know if you knew this, you probably do, dude. Okay, is they're actually made not to fit because if they were exact 100% flawlessly perfect, Ford can sue them. Right for copyrights. Right. But you knew that, right, Greg? Yeah, I knew there's some issues there. I'm sorry, I'm talking fast again. We're up That's there. okay. I'm just, I used to be wound up like that until <laughs> I got away from that business and got out See, here in the country. See, there you go. You're out here in the country. You got right. your little business going. Back to the car. We're okay. getting up. I like that honeycomb. Now, is that a brand new item or what's going right. on? Everything on this car is pretty much new. Oh, so, uh, yeah. The whole rear and panels underneath the floor has all been changed out. It's beautiful, bud. What color is this? Is this a factory color or a color that... Uh... Uh, actually, this is a... Uh, we picked this out. It's a, it's a newer... It's a late model color. Yeah. Is it that Corvette orange? No, it's... Uh, I think it's... I can't remember now. We pulled it out of a chip book. 
Did we search several collars and we were like this? Yeah, now I noticed inside here, this is a pretty unique situation. And I guess this is an East Coast thing. Go ahead and tell everybody what you did there. Yeah, what I do on all my restorations, I always try to seal them with, with a, a bed liner to keep the moisture out. Right, so you went ahead and you bought the, uh, the, the, the colorized style. Uh, wow, dude, that's beautiful. Look at that. And you did this in 850 hours, the whole thing. Yeah. Dude, you need to close your shop down and come work for me, bud. <laughs> okay. Because my, my employees, it would take them like eight years to do something right. like this. Yeah. Yeah. That is beautiful, dude. You got the rhino liner going throughout the car. Now, is that on the floor of the car and everything? Or? Yeah. Uh, when I put all new floors in this car, any vehicle I do, I always shoot them with, with that U-Paul uh, liner. Right. Protects it from moisture. Now, are you talking top to bottom or just inside? Uh, just on the inside. Now, is that inside the doors and the inside the corners and everything? Uh, yeah, I go up inside the quarters, uh, the doors, usually undercoat them. Now, another thing about this, you got brand new interior in it. Now, when you say this thing was taken apart, uh, we're, I guess we're talking gauges, wiring, the whole nine yards. Right, all the dash has been, every wow. little piece on the dash has been redone. All the wiring, the column was on, everything was on the car. Oh, every little piece was on the car. And you're just a one-man operation trying to make a living and doing it right. Can we look at that motor? Yeah, sure. Uh, great. Now, one more thing I want to tell everybody. Uh, you can actually buy a sticker kit like this. This is a factory sticker kit. But that ain't a sticker kit. You painted that on there. That's under the clear coat. Right. And the problem with this car, there's no straight lines, so it's all got to be pulled by eye. So that took me like two days to light the stripe out. And uh, the mocks were actually paint masked. Put all that on, clear coat everything. That way you have wow. no edges. You know? It's beautiful, dude. It's beautiful. So what size engine do we have here, Greg? What's going on? Yes, yeah, 351 Cleveland. That's a 351 Cleveland. So that's the uh, big valve. Big port heads that's on that thing, a lot of high output action. And what's up? Uh, and also, this car's also got AC on it, which was a benefit. It had factory air on it. Okay, so is that an option that you had to purchase from the factory on this model? Yeah, or? yeah I believe it was is actually an option, yes. And then I see you also went ahead and added the aluminum radiator, probably a Griffin or some style like that, which would actually help cool the motor down. That's a good idea because Ford motors run hot anyway. Am I correct? Uh, yes, I think that. Uh, Got that radiator, but, uh, and if you look at this thing, check this shit out. Who the hell wants to pull a motor out of one of these cars to put it back in? It's a nightmare, dude. Right. It's a freaking nightmare. All I can say, I'm sorry, go ahead. Everything under here was replaced with the towers, all this stuff. And, wow. and Mustangs typically down in the pockets of the cowl, they rust out, and there's a draw tooth in that side. Uh -huh. And I actually had I had to well or drill that one out, pull that cowl panel off, it was rotten on the ends. And then I had to rebuild it inside, and I actually put the U-Pole down in here once I rebuild it. Oh put that piece back on, welded it back in. Because you can't get, on a 72, you can't get those, the, the cowl panels. You can't everything after that, but I had I actually used one out of a 65 to replace the draw tube for the heater. Did you replace the torque box on this thing? No, they were okay. They were actually okay? Yep. Well, I'll tell you what, I had a hell of a nightmare. I'm doing a, a 68, and those are a nightmare. Yeah, I didn't want to get into that. Yeah, those are a nightmare. Those are yeah. nightmare. It's a beautiful car, Greg. Can we go look at your... I'm sorry, you want to say something else? Yeah, there's go ahead, dude. actually, there's, I have all the photos from the beginning through this restoration on Bauer Custom Paint. Okay, now is this your Facebook page or right. is this a website? Yeah, it's, it's Facebook. Go ahead and say that one more time. Uh, Facebook page. Bauer Custom Paint. And that's F-O-W-L-E-R Custom Paint. Right. C. Yep. And, and there's other restorations on there also. So people can check you out. Yeah. If they're in this sure. area or surrounding, hell, the whole state of Michigan and surrounding Indiana. Is that where we're at? Indiana? Yeah, we're right pretty close to the border. So They can call you and check you out and, right. and make reservations because it looks to me like you're really stockpiled up and you got customers waiting for you to get a car in here. Yeah, I got a few, I got a few in line. Yeah. yeah. It's never too hard. To, it's never bad to have more customers. So what are you working on up here in your shop, bud? Because I see this is like, what, about a three or four car garage if we really actually looked at it? Right. Just to let everybody know what size we're working in. Now you got a little bit of a, a, a taller ceiling than like, let's say the average Joe at home, but you're actually just working out of your garage if you really think about it. What are you working on now, Greg? Uh, it's a 68 International pickup. Okay. And anything special about it? Besides that black, beautiful paint job, that looks like a mirror finish, look at this. Yeah, this guy's been looking for one of these for quite a, quite a while now, and I'm trying to get it back together and paint on. He's getting married in 35 days, so I got 30. So this days. is like they want to drive this down uh, memory lane. He yeah. says, "Hey, look what we were driving." As they're taking pictures of, 
And on their divorce day, they say, son of a bitch, now I got to sell it to get my wife all the money because I got the shaft. <laughs> she got the gold mine, I got the shaft, and I don't have my truck anymore. Yeah. Is yeah. this a 4x4? Ah, uh, yes, it is. Big 4x4. Four four. Yeah, it, yeah. It's a now, did you restore the engine on this as well? Uh, right? Uh, this one we did, had a little mile, just kind of drive it, so we just, right. we just basically cleaned it up for him. And yeah, now you're in the process of, I guess, color sand and buffing it over here, am I correct? Yeah, I just finished. I'm doing the second pop on it right now, so. Now let me ask you this, bud. What kind of body work did you do on this thing, buddy? How rough really was this thing? Being a 68 model and all? Yeah, it was, uh, it was thin on one side. It didn't have a whole lot of rust, but it was uh, original paint, so. Now is this an original car from Michigan area? Or? Yeah, actually, I think this had a California sticker on the bumper, so. Okay, okay. It was, it was pretty good in that respect. Now when you restored this car, did you take the, obviously it's an off-frame situation, you went ahead and restored all the frame and everything, or did you just have that sandblast and refinish it? Yeah, we just we just cleaned the frame So it's kind of a quickie restoration, not an off-frame restoration. Right, on the far as the frame and the motor goes, yeah, he was a driver for now, him. Now do you do uh, rotisserie restorations as well? Uh, I haven't gotten into those yet, I haven't had the need, so. You don't want to, those type nah, of people really, are too picky. Yeah, yeah, trust yeah, me. yeah, most of these people, I mean, I got a certain standard I hit no matter what, I don't care what it is, uh -huh. and I won't go below that. Uh, for the most part, most people are a little concerned about driving when I'm done, but I always say, hey, they're for well, driving. Well, I'll they're tell you what, exactly. Driving. Because with a paint job like this, it looks like you're, you're over at Lake Placid uh, ice skating in the wintertime. I don't know if I'd want to drive that out on the street either, Greg. Well, let's go look at that cab real quick. Now, this is your homemade paint booth that you made. Let's check that out, show everybody what's going on in here. Now, I guess this would be your intake filter, I guess. Is that correct? Right. So you just took some. Uh, what, what would this be? You, did you make this out of? Right. Got it out. Of, uh, uh, it's actually come out of a furnace. So. Okay. So that's a furnace. Uh, I guess frame section, and then you got these slide-in filters right here that go in there. Right. And that's your intake. Now, where's your exhaust at on this? Uh, the exhaust is on the end. It's exploding from the fan down on the end. Now, does that actually work pretty good being in this big area like this? Yeah. It, yeah. It keeps it cleared out for me. Really? Right. And then, of course, you mounted your uh, eight foot lights right up in the ceiling there. I like that situation then and on the walls. Now did you do that yourself, Greg? Yes. Okay, okay. And we were gonna seal off you know, right up, you know, And this is a paint job right out of this homemade garage built uh, paint booth right here. This is what you painted. Now you said you didn't even buff this firewall, that's straight out of the paint booth. Right. Now do you want your floor down when you paint, Greg? Yep, what they're laying down is I usually do a little wash the boot down and coat the boot. The boot actually now when you say coat it, what are you talking about? It's actually got a coating on, so when the overspray builds up to a certain point, the next job I come in and it washes right off, and I come back and spray it again. So it's a spray on uh, invisible coating, right. and you spray that on your walls, and you just wash all your walls down. Yep, wash them down. I've heard of that stuff, but I never use it. Yeah, which means it saves you having to go back in and paint all the time, and even this bed liner and splattered on there will come right off. So that'll come right off. Yep. Now I do notice one thing here. This is the ultimate redneck style, Yankee style bump catch that you have here. So when all the air is going out of your uh, uh, filter system and the bugs are inside, they're gonna hit that, uh, that uh, what the hell is that called, dude? That's uh, a fly strip. There you go, fly strip. Yeah, that's the biggest thing you gotta look out for. Yeah. And actually they work pretty good. I have one flipping my face. I've never seen that before. That's yeah, you can, you can actually cut these off and when you, keep go, going. you get one in your paint and you can just dab that and hit that fly Son of a bitch, dude. Right out. We just, used, we just, we just uh, found out what Yankee Ingenuity is all about. It's, it's called yeah. right here, dude. Fly, tra fly trap. Dab the fly trap. That's great, dude. This is the, this is the boss. So this is your boss. You know, I, easy, easy girl. Is it a girl or boy? It's got easy, buddy. That's all right. That's all right. We ain't taking no business away from from your coworker here, partner. Okay, okay. Well, Greg, you got a sense of, man. Look what your dog did, bud. Okay, you got all this nose sweat all over my kid. That's all right. You gotta love your dog, dude. Shake it, ahead, make a friend. All right. One more time. That's Fowler. Fowler Custom Paint. And, and you're right here in what town? That's Brunson, Michigan, close to Coldwater, Michigan. Okay, buddy. Thanks a lot, dude. I appreciate all your time. And you are what you call good old blue collar, hardworking USA American dude out there making a living, not taking no shit off the of fucking corporations. All right, what do you think of that, pal? Sounds good. I gotta go, dude. Take it easy, Greg. All right. we'll see you later, buddy. Okay, thanks a lot. Hey, hey, easy, easy. What the? Get out of my way. Let me go. Let me go. Okay, dude. Okay, dude. So the situation we have here is that that's where it's at. The situation found a solution because we got a guy named Greg that's showing America that you can still be your own boss in life. You don't have to be a follower. Be a leader.
and that's exactly what Greg's doing. Getting her done, doing it right, doing it right, because if you can't do it right, don't fucking do it at all, because you ain't doing shit. Oh, okay, come here, boss. There you go, one more time. There you go. I'll tell you when, ready? Okay, on your mark, get set, go. Come on, move both hands around, just move both your hands. There you go, that's it, dude. All right, just keep doing it. Okay, now, no, kind of like you're outlining it. There you go. Now point at yourself, point at yourself. There you go, now, put your thumbs up in the air like, yeah, thumbs up. Okay, stay right there, dude. Okay, that's it. Thank you. I'm going to tell y'all out there, DIY Auto School is the place to be for all you blue collar American son of a bitch and bastards to click on that to subscribe button and do it right. Subscribe now and be a winner in life at DIY Auto School. My friend Pete's going to show you how to do it. My friend Pete is going to take you through step one, two, three, all the way up until the end. Don't let the big let boy the big stick, boy it, in stick your ass. it in your ass. Take it that Take it that bam it. Bam it. Till the son of a bitch won't come out, won't no, come more. out no more. Do it yourself. Auto school's going to teach you how to do it. And be proud of what the hell you do. Subscribe on that little button up there in that corner. And make yourself feel proud that you say, I can do it right. This is Sam Slam, straight out of Miami, and I'm telling you to get her done, and get her done right.